Stephen Seliger, and I'm an associate professor of medicine and an adjunct professor of epidemiology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine in Baltimore. What we conducted was a observational uh, pro, uh, retrospective cohort study using data from a clinical database, a clinical billing database, to examine the utilization of abdominal imaging in patients with autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. And we know that in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, or ADPKD, uh, a, a crucial component of prognostication and risk stratification is the use of abdominal imaging to determine the enlargement of the kidneys and how advanced that is relative to the age of the patients. And it is standard of care and it is part of the generally accepted guidelines that this be performed uh, at least at some point during the care of the, of the patient. What we found was uh, in a sample of nearly 5,000 patients in a uh, commercial insurance database that somewhere uh, of about 50% or one of two over a period of, of over a year received any abdominal imaging of any kind. The vast majority of this imaging consisted of CAT scan or computer tomography or ultrasound or, or sonography. And a, a very small percentage of it, only in fact 9% of patients, received the most advanced abdominal imaging, which is magnetic resonance imaging or MRI. And the majority of this imaging occurred in the ambulatory care setting, but also there was a, a substantial proportion or minority of patients who received abdominal imaging in the inpatient setting. What we believe is that the imaging that was performed in the inpatient setting was be unlikely to be performed purely for risk stratification or prognostication, but more likely would be performed in the setting where the patient has an acute medical event that would require a diagnostic, a true diagnostic imaging test. We, we also found that the patients with more advanced chronic kidney disease, that is, whose polycystic kidney disease had progressed more substantially, were more likely to receive uh, abdominal imaging. Some of that imaging in the most advanced patients may have been in the setting of performing a pre-kidney transplant evaluation, which would be part of the standard of care. Nephrologists who take care of patients with uh, ADPKD uh, need to keep in mind that abdominal imaging is part of the standard of care of these patients that the gold standard measurements for uh, kidney volume, which are essential to risk stratification and for treatment initiation decision, is abdominal imaging with uh, magnetic resonance imaging, although other imaging modalities like CAT scan and ultrasound may be appropriate uh, given individual uh, patient situation. Um, and uh, that, that if the imaging has not been performed in some period of time, uh, that the nephrologist should pay attention and should consider to update that imaging or to obtain the imaging if it has not been performed recently or if the results are not available. So this study was funded by uh, Otsuka Pharmaceuticals. Uh, I did not receive funding for my um, uh, analysis and participation in the study, but I have received in, in research funding and other projects related to polycystic kidney disease from Otsuka Pharmaceuticals. And I also participate in ongoing clinical trials funded by other companies, including Cadman Corporation, <coughs> Palladio Biosciences, and Sanofi.